Rachel from Physiopedia, and today I am speaking to Mina Mojdahedi from ICRC. Mina is the Disability Inclusion Advisor at ICRC. Hello, Mina. Hi, Rachel. Thanks for joining me today. Um, I'm looking forward to chatting to you about your work and a little bit about um, disability and uh, wheelchairs and assistive technology. Um, but before we do anything else, could you perhaps just introduce yourself to people? Tell us a little bit about the work that you do with ICRC. Sure. So um, my title is Disability Inclusion Advisor uh, and I work at, at ICRC. Uh, but actually I cover disability inclusion or, or advanced disability inclusion uh, throughout the global Red Cross Red Crescent movement. Uh, so I also work with um, national societies in the countries and, and also with the International Federation of the Red Cross. So uh, what uh, I do is to in, uh, ensure that the Red Cross, and in this case specifically ICRC, everything we do um, people with disabilities can access it also. So for example, in the ICRC's humanitarian response, um, you know, going beyond our rehabilitation program, making, looking at all of our other programs as well, to make sure that they're conducted in a way that people with disabilities, whether it's a mobility uh, limitation or it's a sensory impairment, like a um, person who might be blind or, or deaf, a person with intellectual disability can access those all of our services as well. Okay, so um, can we talk a little bit about how you're defined? I know it seems obvious, but how do we def kind of define disability? You've just talked a little bit about a few examples, and um, perhaps you could tell us a little bit about the Convention of Rights for Persons with Disabilities in relation to that as well. Absolutely. So uh, the United Nations Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities was adopted in 2006. And uh, to date, I don't remember the exact number of countries, but the majority of countries have, have ratified, uh, signed and ratified the, the CRPD, or the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. And this um, outlines basically all human rights that people with disabilities uh, uh, have um, and some that are then specific to persons with disabilities. So it's in, it's basically complementing all the other international human rights uh, treaties that, that exist. Uh, and in the CRPD, it uh, defines what uh, what is understood by disability. And I want to make sure that I get the the language right. So I'm going to read it from from the text uh, and it says that uh, disability is an evolving concept and that disability results from the interaction between persons with impairments and attitudinal environment and environmental barriers that hinder their full and effective participation in, in society on an equal basis with others. So to unpack this a little bit, uh, one of the key things is first of all that it's an evolving concept. Uh, it can mean that a person can acquire a disability at any, any time throughout their life. Um, it also means that it's uh, context uh, dependent a bit on the context. So for, and that brings us to the next point, which uh, is that it's disability is a result of the interaction between the environment and the person's impairment. And uh, what this means is, for example, if we have a wheelchair user, when the environment is constructed in a way that there are no barriers for a wheelchair user, in other words, there are accessible ramps, um, there are uh, accessible elevators and so on, then that wheelchair user, that person using the wheelchair, would have the same opportunities to uh, participate in society uh, on an equal basis with others. Whereas, if there are, um, let's say there's an elevator, but there are steps to get to the elevator and that person with disability cannot walk, then those are the environmental barriers that would prevent the full and effective participation. Barriers can also be attitudinal. Uh, so, and, and actually this is one of the major underlying reasons for 
exclusion uh, and marginalization of persons with disabilities uh, is that in many uh, communities and societies there there's a lot of stigma associated with disability and the community ha may have uh, negative uh, um, attitudes or, or stereotypes of persons with disabilities. Um, when we're talking about persons with disabilities, uh, we you know we have to remember the the there's it's a big range of different kinds of impairments. So there are disabilities that cause mobility limitations. So for example, someone might have a physical impairment. Um, there are sensory impairments that could be uh, vision impairments, uh, such as blindness or uh, hearing impairment and, and deafness. And then there are also uh, mental health uh, disabilities are considered uh, to fall under this and, and also intellectual and learning disabilities. So are there any types of people with disabilities um, and wheelchairs is just one of the things that we can use to help people with their disability to overcome their impairments. Um, um, can you just touch a little bit about um, how, how therapists, how people that are watching this course may be able to consider how they may be able to help people overcome their impairments and their disability? Well, um, firstly, it's not so much about people with disabilities overcoming their impairments, it's about overcoming the barriers yeah. <laughs> that they face. <laughs> uh, and that's where the wheelchairs, of course, are, you know, uh, or like as similarly to any assistive device, um, they're really critical for being able to access all the other rights as well. So um, without, you know, someone who needs a wheelchair to get around who maybe cannot walk or cannot walk long distances um, uh, and can benefit from a wheelchair, that's going to help them, you know, just even get out of the house. Um, um, have the opportunity to go to school or have the opportunity to uh, become employed. Um, it's important though to recognize that um, the wheelchair in itself is not a, you know, uh, the, the solution to all the answers for um, social inclusion or, or integration, uh, but rather it is that, that critical element in order to be able to access all the other rights. Um, what's important also about wheelchairs is that it has to fit properly. So uh, you can imagine if you had, let's say, a five-year-old child, you know, small, and you give them a 30 kilo wheelchair, um, the chances are that they would not be able to move that wheelchair around themselves and learn those skills that they would need to become independent. And, and that's what this is all about, is um, supporting a person with a disability to be independent in their environment. So having that appropriate assistive device that fits well, uh, doesn't break down, uh, is easy to use, um, fits with also within their uh, context. Um, you know, if it's uh, too wide for the door width, then you know you might not be able to get to the bathroom and so on. Um, and and also, it's really important that the wheelchair fits so that that person can learn those skills to be independent. So uh, you can imagine just um, an environment where you have to maneuver down ramps. Uh, sometimes those ramps are not the accessible kind. <laughs> uh, they're sometimes too steep. Um, sometimes uh, a person using a wheelchair might have to hop down some steps or might have to be able to pull themselves up steps or, or um, be able to explain to someone how to assist them uh, getting up steps. So uh, having uh, a wheelchair that fits it's going to be safer to do all of those things. It's going to be so much easier to learn how to do all of those things. In addition to, of course, you know, um, having a wheelchair that fits uh, will prevent kind of overuse injuries and, and possibly pressure sores and things like that. Yeah, so I guess listening to you talk, um, it's really important for people um, so for therapists or for healthcare professionals working with individuals. Um, people with disabilities, firstly to understand disability and to understand um, the rights for a person with a disability um, and then with that in mind to be able to provide them and, and we're to 
an assistive device and in this situation we're talking about wheelchairs in particular but to provide them with an appropriate assistive device or wheelchair and then and, it, and make sure that that device or that wheelchair is appropriate for them and fits them and enables them to have all the skills to overcome the barriers to their full participation in society um, that would be my summary of what we've just covered is there anything that you'd like to add to that or any other piece of knowledge that you'd like to share with the people that would be watching this video well, I think your summary was exactly right. <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to add to that, that um, uh, also um, uh, having that assistive device uh, is a right in itself as well. <laughs> That's important to recognize as well. Um, so I think that we do play an important role in um, fulfilling that right, but also uh, in the uh, appropriate provision of assistive devices and accessing all, all the other rights as well. Brilliant. Mina, it's been a pleasure to talk to you and thank you so much for um, talking a little bit about that to us. It's a really good introduction to, to enable us to um, learn, uh, learn how to work with wheelchairs and with people who would like to have a wheelchair or um, require a wheelchair appropriately. So thank you for sharing your knowledge with us today. Thank you. It was great talking to you.